Hey, how's everybody doing? Shun Jabril here on the Shane Believer 390 Real Motion. What's good? What's happening? How y'all doing? I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm having a great day. It's uh, it's the afternoon right now. I'm pretty tired for some reason, but I'm really excited because I'm making this tutorial. Uh, Camtasia Studio. I just got it and it's looking mighty fine right now. So tutorials are going to be looking quality from here on and be expecting to see more from me. So in this tutorial, what I really wanted to do uh, is kind of continue the uh, basic After Effects basic series thing that I started like a year ago, because that was the last two tutorials that I made about a year ago. And because I've been getting, I've been getting some messages from people asking if I was going to do more on that, so I wanted I wanted to do more on that. And in this one, I'm going to be covering exporting, rendering, and presets and some other little tips here and there. So enough of me talking. Let's get started. So you're in After Effects, your project is all done, you're ready to send it over to YouTube to a client, get it ready for, for your school project, competition, whatever it is, what do you do? Well, before you even start that, before you even start your project or start making anything, you always have to think about what you want to export it as. So when you make your composition, your main composition, you have to think about if you want it to be a 1080p project or if you want it to be a 720 since it's set at 19, 10, 1920 by 1080 p it's going to be, when I put on YouTube, after I export it, the uh, highest quality is going to be 1080p. But if you're doing something like 720p where you don't want to use too much, um, all you have to do is just set it to 1280 by 720p, set the frame rate the way you want. And as you can see, the uh, canvas kind of shrunk a little. So that's why it's very important for you to decide this before you're ready to export. But I'm just going to leave it at a 1080p. So you're ready to export, what do you do? Well, you go to Composition, and you go to Add to Render Queue. Now, Render Settings over here, you really don't have to worry about anything here. Everything should be good. I mean, it's at best. I think After Effects has this already set up good for you. But what you do have to worry about is Output Module and Output 2. Now, Output 2 is where you want to save your project and what you want to name it. So that's pretty straightforward. Find where you want to save it on your computer. Name it how you want and hit save so when you render it's going to be saved there with that name and hop output module this is where the magic happens so you click on this drop down this arrow facing down here the down arrow thing you click on it and then you go to custom now when I render I usually only mess with three formats and that's AVI QuickTime and MP4 I use AVI to render like uncompressed stuff if I want to take it to something like Adobe Premiere or just send it to somebody who for some reason wants the uncompressed format. But I use uh, H.264 and QuickTime when I want to do it for like YouTube and if I want something easy for playback. Those are the two formats that I use. They're really good quality under HD. So down here is where you click the audio. Um, I'm using Adobe CC right now, and one really cool thing Adobe CC has done is that it allows for audio output to be in auto. So, But if you're not using Adobe CC and you're like on CS6, CS5.5, or CS5, CS4, CS3, I believe there should be like a little checkbox around here that um, lets you check if you want audio or not. But for uh, let me start with H.264. So this is MP4 format. So go to Format Options, Multiplexer, MP4, Standard, that should be good. Uh, leave it if you leave it as that. That's good. Video profile high level 5.1 CBR for bitrate. Now you really when when it comes to this bitrate, you really don't want to do anything like 300. That's too extreme. You're gonna regret it if you do something like that. It's gonna be like impossible to watch. You really want to stay around the range. I mean, if you stay around like eight to 17, you should be really good. There's really no need to go up to like 92 or anything like that. But if you leave it at that, you should be pretty good. Audio, AC, version 2, high. Bit rates for the audio, 256, that's good. And when you when all that is good, just hit OK. And now uh, if you look down here, the output module has been changed to custom H.264. Now, if you're doing QuickTime for your Mac users, I don't even use a Mac. I mean, I have a PC, but I like the QuickTime. You can use QuickTime H.264. Now, I really don't even know what most of these are. I barely even touch them. But, I mean, PNG and Photo JPEG and animation, I've used those before for, like, uncompressed, but the files are really heavy. But for YouTube and other stuff, H.264 is your best go. 
So set the quality at 100, audio uncompressed, audio is the same deal down here. And that's pretty much it, just click OK. And when you're good, name, settings, when all that's good, you just hit render. And there you go, it's rendering. When it's done rendering, you could, you're could you gonna hear a ding and you can pause in case you wanna use other applications or you just have to, for some reason, pause it or you can stop it if you just thought about a change you wanna do. And another thing with After Effects is two things when rendering. One, be prepared to wait a long time for some projects. Because there are some projects, depending on the effects, depending on the length of the project and just the quality of the project, that's going to take, like, hours to render. I mean, this computer that I'm using, I just built it this year. And compared to my laptop, it's like the Hulk compared to a normal human being. But there are some projects that have taken, like, two hours. So just be prepared for that. And again, when you're rendering, if you want to cut your render time by about half, have cap lock on. That's going to stop, that's going to force After Effects to not render the frames in the uh, canvas over here. So it's going to literally cut your render time by about half and you're going to really see a lot of change. So, I mean, if you don't believe me, render two projects without the cap lock on and render another project with the cap lock on and you'll see the uh, elapsed time and as many time remaining will be very different. So those are the two things we're rendering. Now, let's say you get a little complicated. Let's say you have, you want to render multiple compositions or you want to render a project in like three different formats just to see how it looks like. And you don't want to keep going to custom for all of them. What you can do is you can make a template. And to do that, you click on the same arrow key for the uh, output module and go to make templates. Go to edit. You can make a template for AVI, PN, uh, QuickTime, H.264, PNG for anything, MP3. Um, set it how you want. The same deal like we talked about. Set it how you want. Name it. So I'll just name this HD QuickTime. And then hit OK. And now a new template has been created. So I can just click HD QuickTime. And the settings is the way it want is the way I want it, and I can click um, H.264 for this one, FLV for this one, and they're all different settings. Or I can just click on one, hold Shift, and highlight the bottom one, so everything in between is going to be highlighted. And just click uh, HD QuickTime, and now all of them are in that QuickTime setting that I just created from the template. And you can name it how you want. That's the only thing you pretty much have to change: just name it and destination. And another really cool thing with rendering is you can also render images uh, like a snapshot from After Effects to use as a thumbnail. But you also have to be careful because right now this is at 750 frames. So if I send this and try to render it as a PNG file, 750 uh, images are going to be rendered. So what you can do is if you hit go to the spot you want the, uh, the uh, frame that you want to render as your thumbnail or a snapshot, hit B and then hit N. B to drag the uh, beginning of the time work area and then N to drag it to that area and then click composition add to render queue and I already created a, a PNG um, this is my PNG template and it's really easy it's just PNG and they also have a JPEG but I like using PNG and there it is now when you render, render it I said render now when you render it it's gonna be one that one frame because we set the um, composition to only that one frame. So that's just a quick tip for rendering and for rendering snapshots in After Effects if you want to use this as a thumbnail. Because honestly, me personally, I don't use Photoshop. I've tried and I've failed. But I just make most of my images in After Effects. But that's rendering and I think that's pretty much everything with rendering. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot. If you want to get your files, like if you see color banding in your um in your in your compass in your video and you really want to get rid of that it's good to switch this to 16 bits per channel and if it's still not the way you like you can add a this is a really quick tip layer new adjustment layer effects uh, noise and add a 2% noise and then color banding is literally gonna be gone you're not gonna see color banding anywhere so that's a really quick tip but if you when you add that kind of noise throughout your entire composition the files are going to be bigger and the rendering is going to take longer, but guess what? Your file is going to be no color bending. That's what I use for a lot of my projects. It took me like three days to find this answer, to find the answer to that, but you just found it out in like two minutes in this tutorial. Yeah. You're already way ahead of me. 
All right, so the next thing is presets. Now, when I say presets, what do I mean? Well, I'm gonna show you an example. So let's say I'm in After Effects. Let me make this a 3D layer. And if you don't know what I'm doing with the 3D layer and uh, keyframes, you can watch my other tutorial. The other two that I have, they should explain those. I'm just gonna set some keyframes and I'm gonna do like a really dumb animation. It's not dumb, it's cool. So let's say I do like some animation with the keyframes. I play it, I'm like, whoa, the animation is tight. I wanna use this for other projects. How do I do that? Well, instead of me trying to memorize the values and just write on a piece of paper and the spacing of the keyframe, what I can do is I can highlight all these keyframes by just clicking in the timeline and dragging it to highlight the keyframes, go to animation and click save animation preset. And I'll call this uh, toot, short for tutorial. And now I'm just going to remove these keyframes. So let's say I'm in a different project and I say, well, I want to use the animation that I saved that one time. It'll look really good here. I can just go to animation, apply animation preset, click on toot, and there it is. It's applied. And you can do the same thing for other for the other transform properties in After Effects. So for like position, X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation, opacity, if it has a keyframe, you can save it as a preset. And another really cool thing is if I, I can do it for more than one value. So if I do X rotation and scale and Y rotation, let's hit a U. Whoops. To show those keyframes. So I'm just gonna set two keyframes here. Let's say I do something like the scale. And I watch this animation. I'm like, wow, that looks tight. Whatever that was, I don't even know. But let's say I want to save it. I just highlight everything, animation, save animation presets, and I'll call this random blah. Let me remove these. So you guys proof. Let me uh, set these to zero. So I'm in another project. I see I want to add that random blah animation to something. I go to oh, those. animation, apply animation preset, and find random blah, and there it is. Random blah. So that really makes uh, animating a lot easier, and you can save presets. Like I've saved some really cool animation that I've done for other projects that I want to use on throughout my projects whenever I get whenever I think it's right. So that's really a time saver and another thing you can do is you can also do it for effects so let's say I find I do like a I uh, mean stylized glow I'll do like a glow animation let's see what that looks like it's like, it's like a little flash so I highlight the keyframes animation save animation preset and I'll just call this flash Oh, there's already a flash there. Flash two. There we go. So I'll just remove it. I see I want to use flash two. Go to flash two, put it, and there it is. So pretty much anything with keyframes, any animation. I barely use it for position. Actually, I never use it for position because position is like like I move my stuff everywhere, the text everywhere, and I don't really think I need a position keyframe. Except if I'm using it for like an image when doing like a presentation that I know is going to be in the same spot every time. But pretty much anything with keyframes you can save as a preset. So it's really going to make um, animating a lot easier and it's you're going to be able to do like some really cool stuff and not, and not have to like worry about not being able to do it again because you did it in this one project. So you can carry all your animations wherever you go to whatever project you're doing. <laughs> And uh, oh, another really cool thing is let me play animation preset. Let's put the toot on there. So let's say I have it rotating on there, but I'm like, I don't want it to rotate on the bottom. Well, you can go to the anchor point tool right here and it can move this anchor point up here, like to the middle, and then it's rotated, it's rotating on the top. Or you can move it up here and it's rotating up there. <laughs> And you can move it like over here, then it's rotating on that on that um, anchor point. So that's just how you like set your anchors. And the same thing goes for the other ones like scale. You see how it's scaling from there? Yep. So, that, so that's just a really good tip. I mean, you can do a lot with that if you just set the anchor point. You can make a lot of really cool animations. 
and just like even position oh not position rotation so if you want it to be like a I don't know like a gavel or something like it's rotating or rotating clockwise if you put the pan behind tool there you put it here now it's like a spinning I don't know but that's just I don't know whatever you do with it I'm sure you'll do some awesome than what I'm doing right now because right now I don't even know what I'm doing but uh so that's pretty much everything with the tutorial thank you guys for watching uh thank you for being patient with me and for making it to the end um, if you have any requests for tutorials, please let me know in the comment section. I read those, and I like the comments you guys have been leaving. And I, whatever you guys want, I'll be happy to make. So just let me know. Comment, subscribe, rate this video. Formality, I just got to say that. But uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. You guys are awesome. Peace.